closed captioning for Vantage Point Outdoors is brought to you by Woody Sporting Goods. Hello, I'm Chad Taverney with Vantage Point Outdoors. On this week's show, we're going to go over some tips and tactics for trail camera use, and we're also going to show you how to properly maintain your bow during the off season. is um, actually a new product here from Primos. It's called the Primos DPS uh, Deer Positioning System. Um, it's a neat little unit. I actually got this for Christmas. It's different than a trail camera. You have your, your lens here. You have your uh, daylight sensor. And then you have a red light for that goes off every time you take a, it takes a picture. Um, this is a strictly no motion sensor camera. Um, it's used specifically to pattern the deer where they're coming in and field or where they're going through the woods coming in on a certain area. Um, it starts taking pictures as soon as the sun comes up and it stops taking pictures once it gets dark, um, turns itself off. Um, small, it's compact, operates on eight AA batteries. Um, very simple to set up. Um, it has different modes on this camera. You can actually set it for a five second record mode, which takes a picture every five seconds, every 10 seconds, every 20 seconds, every 30 seconds. And it actually has two cool modes on here um, that take a picture every five seconds, but it has a midday skip. So between the hours of 10 and two, it won't take any pictures. Um, and you can do that for five or 10 second intervals. Um, it'll accept up to a 32 gig card. Um, but what's great about this is, um, other than a trail camera, you can put this up and this will actually take pictures um, with this wide angle lens out to 200 yards so you'll be able to make out deer. So it's great if you have a field or a food plot or 
you're in a certain set of woods and you want to see how these deer are moving through those woods and what trails they're using and at what time, this is a great little tool from Primos for that. Set this up um, in an area that you want to cover and it'll take, on an average day, um, I've been using this now here since January and with the uh, times of days with the sun up and the sun down here now being, being winter, I'm averaging about five to 6,000 pictures a day. And what's great is they actually send you a disc in with the package um, to load into your computer that when you stick your SD card in, it compresses all those images on that disc and actually makes it into a, um, a little movie that you can watch. And you can actually go through an entire day's worth of pictures, six, you know, 6,000 pictures in about three, three and a half minutes. Um, you can speed it up, slow it down. You can actually go frame by frame if you want to. Uh, if you have a big buck on there, you can slow it down and do frame by frame. Um, but I mean, it's a great tool that I found, um, especially here for late season. You can really pattern your deer into where they're coming in the fields and where they're going into these food plots and at what time of the day and how they're moving. Um, and again, it's from Primos and they make a great product, like Chad said, with the Truth Cam. So for the price, I really don't think it can go wrong. And I think if you use one of these this coming archery season, it's probably going to give you a little bit more success in bagging a big buck. You know, I can't think of a product in the last 20 years in the in the hunting industry that's revolutionized the way people scout and hunt their properties than trail cameras. Um, today's trail cameras are a wonderful tool. They allow you to scout your property 24 hours a day, 7 days a week with very little human disturbance. And there's really no better way to gain insight on what the deer on your property are doing. You know, another thing that's really important when you're putting up your trail cameras is make sure that you have your trail camera positioned properly in terms of height off the ground. I see a lot of guys that make this mistake and they'll put their trail cams either too low or too high off the ground. And first of all, they're not taking advantage of the camera's sensor ability that way because they're just uh, reducing the overall sensitivity of that sensor because they have it too low or too high. And second of all, make sure that you put these trail cameras up about waist height. That's what I've found over the years. That seems to be the best uh, the best way to put your trail cameras up on the tree is about waist height. This way here you're going to ensure that you're getting the very best image of that deer or that animal when it comes by. All right now here's something that's pretty important. Um, I was in here probably three weeks ago now and I put a trail camera up on this particular spot where I had a runway and uh, there was a few tracks not a lot of deer but uh, it was a place that it, it looked like there was a runway and I hung a trail camera on this runway and I'm, I haven't uh, swapped the cards in on it I'm gonna do that now but uh, I just came through here on, on top of this ridge and what I've noticed is that there is now a pretty good runway about uh, 20 yards further down the ridge from where I got this trail camera hung and it appears to me that the majority of the deer are using that other runway which is still within shooting distance of the tree that I have prepped here but I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to move this camera that I have hung right here put it probably 30 yards down further on this ridge 
and uh, where I can watch and monitor this uh, this new runway and I'm going to compare the pictures that I get over the next couple of weeks between this place here this spot here and uh, in that spot where this new runway is I mean regardless I should be able to uh, shoot any deer that comes on either on either uh, on either runway but um, if I'm getting if it seems to me through the trail camera pictures that more deer are using that other runway I might take the time to reprep another tree a little bit closer to that other runway to make sure next fall I'm in the correct spot you know another thing that uh, a lot of guys don't think about when it comes to using trail cameras is uh, you know what size SD card that they're using when you're swapping cards you know a lot of the uh, trail cams today are you know five six and some are even as much as eight megapixels and those pictures are pretty large files and they can take up a lot of space on a on a uh, SD card so it's important that you're that you're using a large enough SD card where you don't have to come in here to your trail cams every three four days and swap cards where you can go you know two weeks a month if you have to even two months without swapping out the cards so uh, I personally use at least a gigabyte SD card in all my trail cams and in a lot of them some of the uh, some of the more high-tech ones with with a better image quality I'll put uh, a two gigabyte SD card in and uh, this way here it's going to ensure that I can leave my trail cams up for several weeks or even several months and not have to worry if my SD cards are filling up with uh, with pictures Now while I'm out here checking trail cameras today, I'm going to be putting up a new trail camera that I haven't tried before. It's the uh, the new Moultrie M80 XT. It's a uh, 5 megapixel infrared flash trail camera. I'm just going to get ready to go put it out in a pretty good spot. And uh, I'm going to leave that camera out for probably a month or so. See what I get for pictures. And uh, be looking for a full review on the Moultrie M80 XT in a future episode. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit um, about postseason bow maintenance. Um, I usually I shoot my bow all year round, but we're going to just go over some tips and some tricks here for postseason bow maintenance. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to check all your bolts and all your screws, all your sights, make sure everything's tight. Um, you want to check all your strings, all your servings, um, your peep sight if you use um, a string loop uh, for your release. You want to check that make sure that's tight. All your strings um, in your cams, everything, all your servings, and any um, string whiskers or anything you have. And you also want to put a little bit of wax on, um, good quality bow string wax, um, but not a lot. Just put a little bit on your fingers and run it up and down the strings just to coat that if you're going to keep your bow in the case or anything for the off season. Um, go over your cams, your sight, all your bolts. Um, if you're not going to shoot all year, then I recommend taking it to your archery shop and let them go over everything. And we're actually going to have a segment um, a little later on with our new sponsor, Woody Sporting Goods. Um, he's going to go over 
uh, total bow maintenance and crossbow maintenance for you crossbow hunters. Um, so just a little bit of postseason bow maintenance. Just check your string, your cables, your cams, um, tighten up all your screws. And if you're going to store your bow um, in the case for the spring, then definitely put a little bit of bow wax on the string. Um, not a lot. You don't want to gunk it up and then it gets down into your cams. Um, pretty much just a little simple maintenance and some care. And I'm going to go a long way. All right, well, I just finished checking the trail cameras. I'm getting ready to head back to the truck. That's all the time I got for this week's show. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time, right here on Vantage Point Outdoors.